Hello everyone and welcome to Edic Search Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai. Today we will continue our series on applied anatomy for hernia. And this is one of the most important parts as it's going to discuss a very tricky concept that is the Furtado's classification for laparoscopic view in inguinal hernia. So if you have missed on the previous parts, do have a look. We have discussed the concepts of anterior and posterior anatomy. We have discussed the nomenclature of ventral hernia as well as the laparoscopic view of ventral hernia. We have also discussed the groin hernias from anterior aspect and the Furtado's classification is what is remaining following that. Some important questions and name structures that have not been discussed, we will see in the next and the final part. So we have already seen laparoscopic view in case of the ventral hernia as well as going towards the groin. We have seen the ligaments that is the medial and the lateral umbilical ligaments and the inferior epigastric artery and the various fossas. So now looking at the same landmarks from within, that is the laparoscopic view, and we are looking at the conventional preperitoneal or the extraperitoneal space, you can see the basic landmarks that we have already discussed, the pubic symphysis, urinary bladder, anterior superior allex spine, the arcuate line and linear alba. We have already discussed that the posterior counterpart of inguinal ligament is the iliopubic tract. So you can see the iliopubic tract in the Furtado classification. And the iliopubic tract is what divides the area into a supra-inguinal or what Furtado calls as the anterior area and an infra-inguinal or a posterior area. Remember that anterior and posterior here is given by Furtado, whereas it is easier to remember that supra-inguinal and infra-inguinal are important components in inguinal hernia anatomy. So the aleopubic tract is the counterpart of inguinal ligament when we see the anatomy from within. The inferior epigastric artery we have already seen. You can see it up to the arcuate line and that is in the supra-inguinal compartment. We already know that the deep inguinal ring is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery pulsation. So similarly, you will see the deep inguinal ring, which is an opening in the fascia transversalis, lateral to the inferior epigastric artery fold. So these are still the landmarks that we have already seen. I'm just trying to create the anatomy that Furtado has described in a very simplified manner. A lot of questions are asked in this area and this concept is very important if you want to embark on a journey to do laparoscopic groin hernia repairs. Now we know the contents of the inguinal canal, the vas deferens. So how you can remember the triangle borders very easily you know that vas deferens has to go towards the urinary bladder because it joins the seminal vesicle. So vas deferens from deep inguinal ring will travel towards the midline that is behind the urinary bladder whereas the spermatic vessels will go towards the retroperitoneum. So the spermatic vessels have to go laterally. So if you remember this logically, this is very simply the inverted Y of Furtado. The inferior epigastric artery forms the stalk of the Y and vas deferens medially and spermatic vessels laterally form the two arms of the inverted Y. The peritoneal reflection is created in transabdominal preperitoneal or TAPP surgery. So the peritoneal reflection is seen here. So this is the basic of Furtado classification. You can see now the boundaries of the Furtado's uh, anatomy classification. And once you have seen this, it's very easy to understand because we have already seen that inferior epigastric artery forms the boundary of Hazelbeck's triangle or the medial fossa. So whatever hernias you see in laparoscopy, medial to the inferior epigastric artery but above the iliopubic tract are direct hernias and the hernias that are lateral to this are indirect hernias. 
in the infrainguinal compartment that is below the iliopubic tract if you see a hernia medial to vas deferens you are looking at a femoral hernia and the two other structures of importance are triangle of doom and triangle of pain so this essentially is an explanation of the furtado's laparoscopic inguinal hernia anatomy which is given as inverted y and phi triangle concept so now let us see the triangles in detail. The two very important triangles that are asked routinely are triangle of pain and triangle of doom. Now it is very easy to understand if you are asked the boundaries of triangle of pain, iliopubic tract is superior peritoneal reflection on one side and spermatic vessels medially. Why it is known as triangle of pain? Because a lot of nerves pass through that area essentially the femoral nerve, the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. And no tacker should be applied in the triangle of pain while fixing the mesh to avoid chronic post-operative pain in inguinal hernia surgeries. On the other hand, the triangle of doom is medial to triangle of pain and the triangle of doom therefore will have boundaries which is palmatic vessels laterally vas deferens medially and peritoneal reflection inferiorly. It is known as triangle of doom because this is the area where the external iliac artery and veins are passing beneath this area. So again, no taker should be applied in this area. It is easy to remember that triangle of doom is medial because the Y stalk is formed by inferior epigastric artery which is a branch from these vessels. So, the logical location of external iliac artery and vein should be medial to the nerves. So, once you understand this concept, the surgery, the laparoscopic hernia surgery is also described in this concept. It suggests that the first dissection after peritoneal reflection creation is the zone 1 or the lateral dissection. This is also known as the deluxe space Okay, in some anatomy textbooks. Then we dissect the zone 2. Zone 1 is easy. Zone 2 is relatively simple. And the most difficult part is zone 3. So the deluxe space has to be dissected first, then the regius space, and finally the space of Bogros. So earlier textbooks used to say this entire space is space of Bogros. Then we had space of regius extending a bit beyond the prevesical area. So you had space of regius medial to inferior epigastric artery and space of Bogros lateral to inferior epigastric artery. And now laparoscopic hernia concept suggests that there are three different spaces and each of them needs to be dissected in order to complete the dissection of groin hernias. Once you have dissected this area and you put your mesh, it is very important to remember that no taker should be applied in the areas of triangle of pain and triangle of doom. Recent articles suggest that the triangle of pain extends 1 to 2 centimeters above the iliopubic tract and this has to be kept in mind. So with that we come to an end of the inverted Y and phi triangle concept for laparoscopic inguinal hernia anatomy. One of the very important concepts if you want to perform inguinal hernia surgeries laparoscopically as well as very important for exams. You already do by now. This is our website www.learnwithedusurge.in. Look at the videos if you have missed. We also have book recommendations for surgery as well as anesthesia radiology. So you can have a look at that. Thank you.